Well, as you can see, it's getting... How's my hair? Is it okay? I have to be presentable. As you can see, this is getting washed in. It's not much of a wash, is it? It's really becoming a fairly tight, cartoonish wash-in. I'm also covering pretty, pretty thoroughly all of this burnt sienna that I have underneath there. I love burnt sienna. Really do. Um, in this case, it's not really going to show through. Well, it does in a very subtle way, but mostly here, probably not much anywhere else. It's okay. I really needed to get rid of the white. For me, that's important. So, um... I think it's okay, basically. You know, added a couple of details here and there. A few tree branches. I'm not fond of these stumps. I have these spaced too equally from each other. That's okay. That'll change too. What I wanted to mention, though, is I washed in the top of this, not when I was staining the canvas, but when I'm just doing sort of the wash in and I need to poke into some detailed areas. I use this little, uh, what is this, a four? Yeah, it's a four. Flat brush. Brand new. It was brand new. And I don't like using a brand new brush for my final painting. I really like to wear down the shoulders. Those being... What? This corner and this corner a little bit. And when I'm using this to wash in, to do my wash in, my underpainting, I won't, I won't use it to scrub because if I use a new brush to scrub, I'm damaging it right away and I'll cause, the, I'll cause these hairs to splay. I don't want that to happen. I just want to wear down the tip a little bit. So it's not such a surgical looking application of paint, you know, it, it, it shows through when you're actually painting. Now, I'm not going to use this anymore on this on this canvas. This canvas is actually particularly rough. Uh, it's like painting on sandpaper. So, uh, it's worn the shoulders down a little bit, just the way I like them. Now, I'm going to go into, uh, into this lower area. I don't have any details to worry about, really. So, I have a new brush another new brush and I'm going to wear this one down a little bit. It's an opportunity to take these shoulders down a little bit as well. Okay, so this is all going to be dark and I'm just going to mix up some... Well, I'm low on ultramarine blue so I think I'm just going to use cobalt blue and um, burnt over. It's on my palette anyway, and it's dark enough. These, for the most part, will be rocks. This area, for the most part, will not have a lot of attention draw, drawn to it. So we'll stick with the dark colors here. And again, I'm not going to scrub with a new brush. I review, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, if I'm going to, even if I'm going to scumble. Uh, any back and forth quick motion, uh, I'll use an older brush for that. I won't use a new one because I want to preserve that for, for. Um, well, I want it. You know, I don't want to ruin it unnecessarily. Take away the qualities of a square brush, then you may as well use a round brush or a filbert or something like that. So I'm really laying the paint in, almost as though I were making. You know, as though I were doing my overpainting. So, we'll just... I want the dark, the darkest of the dark. You know, I, it may not show on my uh, underpainting right now. But I definitely want, seeing as this is all going to have light in the distance, and more character, and, and more, more interest, I need, I need, where, where all this interest meets with the foreground, I need it to be very dark. Not that it's going to stay really dark, it's just that if your underpainting is dark, where dark meets light, then even if I add some lighter strokes in the foreground, 
the space between the strokes will be quite a bit darker than if I washed it in light. And the darker the space between the strokes are, um, the stronger the contrast, the stronger the appearance of the application of paint, the stronger the painting, the stronger that area. If it gets washed out a little bit in the foreground, I'm not concerned. I need this to have an impact against this. Juxtaposition. But I'm just going to wash the entire foreground in with burnt over and cobalt blue. And it'll only take me a second. Okay, seconds over. It's longer than a second, but you know what I mean. And look at this too. I have this rock arcing like this ending here. And then the foreground rock arcing here and ending here. <laughs> you know, small things. I don't always notice them right away but they're important. It's important to avoid that. Small but small but important considerations. So let's put light right across there. All right. And let's extend this as well. We just we don't want to have Too much going on down here. Um, and that ends there, and that ends there. Let's just go with this gray here as well. I may re I may reintroduce a few lines, you know, in the immediate foreground, but I'm not going to not going to worry about that just yet. Okay, I'm pat, 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 but not back and forth, right? Yeah, let's just get it dark. That's, that's the main thing. That burnt sienna is such a beautiful, wonderful, but strong color. I fear it. I fear it. I fear its overuse in a painting like this. So we'll try to avoid its overuse. Okay, I'm just going to stick my fat gray head in, in the way here for a moment. Just fine. Okay, that's it. Simple. What we have now is a cartoon. Which is great. Because now, we can afford to loosen things up. This has to dry. I like the composition, you know. Everything looks kind of chubby. But, uh, hey, that's not the painting. That's just the beginning of things. See you soon, guys.